Second line of defense is know the what, who, why, how of FDA regulations. Because it is a device. Is it? Does it need to be FDA regulated? Is, does it have to be FDA approved, cleared, listed? I also had the distinct pleasure of staying on the FDA phone line for two hours. That music is so soothing. And finally, when I got a hold of someone, they said, check the website. Because they have a website that has all the regulations and everything listed there. Awesome. Thanks for your time. So I went to the website, and I spent a lot of time researching this. And uh, some of you may have seen it, but on uh, uh, Modern Manual Therapy, I did a blog article, The Top Five Myths. Okay? And one of the myths that I looked at was clinicians must utilize an FDA-approved device in order to safely apply BFR. Um, so I'm, this might be a little bit dry material, but I think it's very important for you to understand why, wh how the FDA labels things, okay? what terminology they use. So here's the definitions that they use to, for certain devices. They use listed, cleared, approved, and 510K exempt. Sounds like you have a mortgage or you're like a bank account or something, right? I put a link here. You can get it uh, in your PDFs. If you want a more detailed explanation, I'm going to give you the brief overview. I can guarantee you that's as riveting as it probably makes you think it is, right? Listing a device. This is the most basic task required of a manufacturer, okay? It is not stringent by any means. As long as the device meets pre-existing standard for the category, because everything's listed by category, which have already been identified as safe, the device is automatically approved, quote unquote. That's why I put that in there. It's not listed, excuse me, it's not FDA approved, but it's like, awesome, you met it, you can now pay us money and we'll put it on here, okay? No extra safety or effectiveness evaluation process. They're pretty much hoping, which most manufacturers now do, that you have some sort of quality control measures on your own and you're labeling it and all that, right? Cleared devices. These are new devices identified by the FDA as, sorry, substantially equivalent to another legally marketed device. That's their quote, not mine. My emphasis. Must go through this wonderful submission process called 510K so that you notify the FDA of their intent to market at least 90 days in advance. So this is a new device. You are trying to market it. You need to notify the FDA 90 days in advance before you start marketing, okay? It allows the FDA time to determine whether the new device is equivalent to a device already placed into one of the three classification categories. Because it may seem ridiculous, but the FDA doesn't want to do more work than it has to, right? It seems it's a bureaucracy, so they probably want to do some work, but they want to know, can I just put this in one of these three categories first so that we don't have to go through this whole process, okay? Approved devices, so listed, or we're going hier hierarchically, uh, listed, cleared, approved. Approved is defined by the FDA as needing a pre-market approval, a PMA, prior to marketing. This is so riveting, guys. Generally reserved for high risk devices. Okay, so we're talking about things that have a high risk to the, to the person using it. So maybe it's radiation or something like that. Or, and or to the person that is, uh, it, it is being used on. They must provide reasonable assurance of the device's safety and effectiveness during the initial process. So this is the only time that the FDA really says, hey, let's check that quality control and safety and effectiveness and all of that. And there's a database here you can search for anything if you ever want to. So how are BFR classified? They are classified under the category of pneumatic tourniquets. Sorry, the type. Under the category of general and plastic surgery devices. Hmm? Right, because pneumatic tourniquets initially started in the OR. Right? We have to occlude, not restrict, occlude blood flow so that when I cut into your limb, we don't have a massive blood spilling. Right? We need to control that environment. So they were put under general and plastic surgery device category. They're considered, everything under that category is considered a therapeutic device. Yeah. Yep. 
so again, for your viewing pleasure, I actually have Code of Federal Regulation 878.5910. So you can read it. That brings that up that, pneumatic tourniquets. Okay? And they define a pneumatic tourniquet as an air-powered device consisting of a pressure-regulating unit, connecting tubing, and an inflatable cuff. Wow, that's general. Right? That's very general. And the cuff is intended to be wrapped around a patient's limb and inflated to reduce, sorry, it's over there, reduce or totally occlude circulation during surgery. Okay, sounds like a BFR band to me. Because everything that we use has a regulating unit, so we know what the pressure is. It's an air power device manual. It has tubing and a cuff that will accept that air and inflate, right? And we don't use it to occlude, but we certainly use it to reduce circulation. So pneumatic turner kits are considered class one devices. That means they just have general controls. Do you have your quality assurance? Do you have your, uh, you know, are you safely manufacturing it, labeling it, et cetera? They're exempt from that 510K process. So we, it does not need to, pneumatic tourniquets do not need FDA uh, review prior to marketing. It's considered low risk by the FDA. Pneumatic tourniquets are considered low risk. So any BFR device, okay, I don't care whether it's automatic, I don't care whether it's manual, any BFR device that you use, regardless of its complexity, regardless of how it's built, it, we're not using it for general or plastic surgery, as far as I know. So technically, every BFR band is considered being used off-label, which you may say, oh gosh, no, that's not good. Well, the FDA also says that healthcare providers can utilize devices off-label with proper safeguards if the healthcare provider feels that there will be some benefit. I mean, you can't get more general than this, right? I mean, you could, you, you could theoretically have BFR devices that are unregulated. Now, the, the ones that we use, they have very good control systems. They have everything going for them. But what I wanted to put this out there and say is, to my knowledge, and I've spent countless hours, trust me, on the phone with the FDA, Trying to, trying to get answers and looking this over, is that to my knowledge, there is no BFR device that is approved or cleared by the FDA, only listed, which is the lowest stringent thing. And furthermore, anything that's under that pneumatic tourniquet category is considered a therapeutic device. There is no device that is specifically cleared or approved for clinical rehab populations.